So, um, let's start with you, Ellie. Do you want to describe your character, <clears throat> who they are, what their current mission is, and yep. you know, the family, etc.? So, I am playing Toshi Dell uh, of the Transistors, who are the Enclave. Uh, Toshi is an envoy, so she uh, is out to try and uh, make peace and build bridges after an unfortunate incident a little while ago. Maybe someone from her family kind of let loose some like big supervillains from a prison um, and maybe turned out to be a cackling um, megalomaniac. So she's trying to smooth over all that kind of stuff and find a way forward for her family. Um, in terms of looks, if I can find it in my character sheet some more. She's feminine and striking, has quite a, a welcoming face, but it's quite uh, and quite an angular body. Not kind of traditionally beautiful or anything like that, but quite interesting. Okay. Uh, Lawrence? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, my character is Acquirer Morgan, who is a... Uh, acquirer for the Fountainhead Commerce League, um, who is uh, a scavenger of sorts who's tasked with going into the wastes and looking for profitable materials and resources. Uh, they are um, somewhat uh, ambiguous looking, um, attractive, um, kind of sharp features, um, kind of cold expression. Um, Slim athletic build, and yeah, they're 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 gender neutral as well. They can go by they. Okay. Uh, do you say what their current goal is? Oh, um, uh, main goal is to seek out some form of technology that would allow the Fountain of Commerce League to move through the ghost field. Nice. All right, uh, Ed. Um, I'm playing. Let me remind myself of my name. Uh, Draco Kafka, who's a ranger for the Justicars of the Word, who are the Lawbringers of the Wasteland. He's sort of rugged looking, um, very weather beaten, has a shaved head. Weird and like a whole bunch of religious looking tattoos, wears sort of utilitarian desert clothing, like a big cloak and some robes, um, some like Assassin's Creed looking leather armor, a bunch of pouches, a lot of knives, big revolver, has a riding lizard, and his current mission is to track down and apprehend or just apprehend um, the supervillain from the Enclave who raided the Commerce League trying to get information on the WMD stockpile and then released a bunch of criminals from Cryostasis Matrix Prison and so Awkward. I think, yeah I think uh, we said that Kafka and Toshi have been sort of working together yeah, I think so. Because yeah, one of my links is that you and I have fought side by side. Yeah, and you make a good bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, Angel. Yes, so I'm playing Edriel from the Singulars, which are the servants of the One True Faith. Edriel is uh, a firebrand, so she's kind of a revolutionary, I would say type of character she looks feminine she has his uh she has dark skin uh half of his face is brown uh she has passionate eyes a graceful body he she wears um robes uh half black half red colors kind of thing and he and her main objective right now is uh dethroning the the prophet of doom, who has taken over his uh, her religion, and he's to is uh, preaching false false uh, false teachings. Okay, cool. Uh, so, hmm. might as well start with that then. So, 
Um, sure. What's your plan then to try and dethrone them? What are you trying to do? You've picked outsider, yes. Yes, uh, I've. Uh, yes. Okay, so you're not a not spending a lot of time hanging out with the rest of the family, I guess. Then, because they're all oh, profit this, profit that, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I have kind of my own group of uh, followers who have uh, who have followed me uh, after the season of the religion okay. of the cult. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the prophet I... has set up mm. in the um, Anastasios, the holy site where the last preacher of the end times died. The prophet they claim that they are a reincarnation of, and. Obviously, they're drawing a lot of your family there to them. And you're not sure because you haven't been by that way very much recently, but uh, you seem to be constructing something there. So is your plan to expose the prophet as a false prophet to uh, create your own breakaway religion? or what? Uh... Definitely exposing as a false prophet, uh, and to do that first, I need to gain the the support of the other families. Right now, my my group is too weak, and I don't think uh, we are strong enough to take over. Okay, so you're going to try and meet some of the other families to get some support. Yes. Okay, right, which one's first? I think that will be uh, what's the name. Uh, Ellis one, uh, what's it called? The transistors. Transistors. Yep. Okay, so the transistors are settled at a one of the towers to the west of the Anastasios. So you and your group of followers, I guess, are heading over there. Yes. All right. Uh, Ellie, is yeah. Um, someone there in particular to meet this delegation, or will it be one of the sort of transistors? standard people. So I suspect Toshi is probably out somewhere because she's probably with um, Dracos. Mm. Um, but because uh, the the other group is such a, a kind of close friends and confidants, they probably will be sent someone relatively senior to meet them. Okay. Um, maybe not the head of the family or the head of the household because um, mm. they're probably down a tech mine up to it, their elbows in Greece. Um, but, you know, someone relatively senior will come out and meet them. Okay. Do you want to play them? Uh, yep, sure. Alright, describe ah. this person. So, I think this person's going to be middle aged, probably, uh, male, uh, greying hair that once was black, and probably kind of olive coloured skin. So your uh, group comes up and is met by this person. What do you say? I t I emerge from the from the from the wasteland. And I take out my, my I take off my my hood, and I say, I've traveled a lot, uh, many miles to get here because I have dire news. I would like to solicit help for your, from your family. Oh, uh, please, please, come in. Let, let us speak indoors. Uh, this is not a place to conduct business, but, but indoors. Uh, you must be weary. Thank you. How, how can we be of service? I... I am part of the Singulars. But... The, something has happened. What? Uh, to, to think that something could uh, trouble your family so. A false prophet has arisen and has taken over the comp the family, and is corrupting the the, the religion. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's not good at all. Um, uh, how can I help? 
I will I am I will need your support in in confronting this threat. This is something that that concerns us all. Right now he is keeping to himself. But I believe that in the future his seed will spread all over the all, all over the families. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm. Well Well we can address the councils and um it, but we will have to debate it, of course, but that, that is just our way. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, that the debate will reach the conclusion that we'll be able to help you. Um, I, I'm not quite sure we'll, we'll do everything we can, but we're, we're not the most martial of sorts. Uh, we might be able to help provide other assistance. I... I... Your, I understand your family is very close to ours because you are the providers of the technology that we use to, to commune with God ah uh, yes uh, indeed uh, as you say uh, that um, puts you in a very important position if you were to stop allowing the, the, this false prophet to access the source to access God, it will be much easier for for for, for me to restore the fa the the faith. Yes, d denying them their uh, power as a prophet, showing them that they are indeed uh, false. Yes. 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 Um, I I suspect that's something we could we could try and manage. Yes. As I said, we'll have to debate it, but. But that's merely a formality. In return, I, I I am prepared to help in whatever manner you may need. I am I have no lack lack of, of skills that may be useful to you. So I I am um, I suppose we're always on the lookout for um well any any new technologies that we come across. But I know that sometimes well if you're having such a, a an upheaval. Uh, within your family, uh, if there are any who, or if you find any who, who maybe we find aren't quite fitting in anymore, then we can look after them until you're uh, until they're ready to return. Hmm. And for what purpose? What for, for what purpose of looking after them? Hmm. Merely to ensure that. Such great minds as those in your family are not wasted in the wasteland. So you wish to use them? Well, we'd like to like help them learn. Uh, I'm just thinking that if, if you had such an upheaval after your denouncing of the prophet, you might find some people aren't quite as willing to follow you as they were before. And I'm saying that we'll give them a safe place until they come to their right mind. And if they will have, have, and if they will never come back to their right minds? Uh, well, then we'll make sure they're safe and surrounded by technology that will hopefully expose them to God. I see. That is... I mean, only if people happen to decide that they're questioning their faith too much for you. I think I think that could be arranged. Okay. Oh, excellent. Good. Good. All right. So you made a deal, I guess, that in return for the enclave shutting off your their access to God, they get to take in anyone who loses their faith as a result. Interesting. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, look at that companion deficit. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Um, let's move across the wasteland to see where the two people scouring for signs of a criminal have gone. Got to. Uh, Toshi and Draco, you're hunting down the Commodore. Whereabouts are you going to do so? Um, well, I figured we'd probably been tracking them. Um, so if they, if they've not, if they've released the prisoners, hmm. 
I imagine we're somewhere on the east side of the map, uh, oh, yeah. in the wasteland, like following the trail. Okay. And yeah, we're on the hunt. Okay, so right, the two of you are there. Yes, on the trails that link these different settlements together. The wasteland, of course, is uh, a strange place to be in, outside of the uh, security of the that ring of towers that you call home. Uh, it's, in some parts, uh, overgrown and ruined, as uh, buildings have long gone under disrepair. In other places, the land is strangely verdant and blooming, but not in any way that looks natural. And throughout it all, you can just see hear the occasional buzz of the robot servants whose job it was to tend the world, lurking in the undergrowth, guiding it according to the whims of the uh, intelligence on the network. It's all quite fascinating, but I do wonder how many of these plants are poisonous. So those ones, or those ones, or those ones. Those ones are fine. Okay, those but they're, fine. they're very close. Birds. Okay, they're, they're, they're very close to the, the poisonous ones you pointed out to start with. Yeah, um, it, there's a bit of a knack. There's a, a very sharp learning curve. Hmm. <laughs> they, they just don't have enough wires for me. Sorry. So Draco, the reason why you've stopped here is that you've spotted something on the trail that might be a clue to the person's position. What is it? Ooh, um... Well... She's been... They haven't established an agenda yet. Um, they've been moving with a small group of MOOCs, servitors of some kind, uh, we suspect they're robotic or cybernetic in nature. Toshi knows more about that. Um, but I found what looks like the remains of a camp. Um, okay. It's a little, like, smushed out campfire. Um, the burnt out remains of a power cell that I think were probably part of a portable charging station for something. Okay. Um, signs that some people stood watch. Mm. Um, the fire is still slightly warm. So okay. I think uh, we're not far away. Um, so we should be on our guard. Okay, cool. Um... If they needed a fire, then at least some of them must be warm. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe that's, that's just common. Encouraging. I mean, you've yet to find a reason why they busted open the prison, apart from maybe to cause chaos. Yeah. 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 I mean, that... It's neither here nor there, really. <laughs> well, unless they've, they've recruited. Yeah, exactly. That's what has us worried. Yeah. I, I really can't apologise enough. I mean, they always seem so bright and focused. I, I don't know why they just kind of fell off the rails, as it were. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> crime is crime. Right. Ah, true. Yes. Once, once you go down the griefer path, you know, it doesn't really matter what pushed you onto it. So you really seem to understand. You well, followed... I'm sure we'll have a long time to figure that out on the ride back to wherever your place is. Does it have a name, or is it just... Uh, just the transistor towers, I think. Back to the transistor tower. So it's definitely... <coughs> this path is heading west, sort of curving underneath the towers uh, towards the fort um, but you know that you're close now um, what's the plan do you try and follow the try and keep pace with them do you try and try and catch up with them try we should try and get a look at them if we can find out exactly yeah. how many there are and we need more what information before we can plan mm. um, I'm going to call it into HQ yep I crank up the big radio on my lizard saddle bags and <laughs> send a brief report. Um, cool. Alright. Then 
start really? following the tracks but sort of stealthy now you know sort of keeping an eye out um we're okay. probably just gonna have to play it by ear you know just try and keep out of sight yeah all right so that sounds like um yeah that sounds like a wasteland survival role to try and get through the uh wasteland without the minimum of fuss that's steel right yes could you roll that for me please okay I steal on do the we dive. both roll that, or do we? Does Ed just roll that? Uh, I, I figure Ed's taking the lead. Excellent. Stay low. And follow me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a ten on the dice. So I'm assuming your steel isn't negative. No, it's plus one. All right. Nice. Um, I survived the shit out of that wasteland. Yeah. So that was a hit or a seven plus so you pick two of you avoid danger you're not delayed or you have enough supplies okay so i'm gonna go with i avoid danger and i have enough supplies okay um, but you're taking your time yeah we'll say that um we have to <coughs> oh pardon me okay. we have to move through some very broken um Steep rubble piles, you know, like the big the ones in Fallout Three that cut off different areas from each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but on note, yeah. Yeah. And like yeah. my riding lizard can take that quite well, but Toshi's little quad bike um, gets into trouble, and we have to like tie, like hoik it up a little bit, yeah. and mm -hmm. like to stay out a little. Okay, um, because you, because you got a ten plus, you also get to pick an extra thing. Uh, so you find either you find a hidden treasure in the wasteland, a secret path that allows you to take this route without having to roll, or a secret which could be details on a threat, signs of other civilizations, the origin of the fall, etc. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say find a. hidden treasure in the wasteland sure why not okay so as you so you climb up this hill uh to get a look as you wanted and from the top of it you can just about see yes there's this sort of trail going around the giant debris so obviously they had to go around it they weren't able to go over it um and just at the tip of that you can see what looks like the sort of back of a quite large mechanical creature well a few of them actually sort of lumbering through the sort of overgrown jungle so well, the, and at the forefront you can just about make out the sort of tiny figure of your uh, target but off to one side to the distance oh, has uh -oh. dropped out I'm I can hear you but ah. okay Okay, all right. I, my win my Skype window has closed, but I can still hear you, and you can still hear me. So uh, it's kind of magic, I okay. guess. Computers. Computers. Um, right. So, off to one side, however, uh, you can see what looks to be a old um, water processing station. Now, these are normally uh, quite overgrown and weird because you know they contained all sorts of strange nutrients and devices to keep the uh, biome safe and those went wrong but this one I mean Toshi you'll recognize with your tra machinery trained eyes this one's pristine it's in complete functioning condition and there seems to be a sort of small radius around it where um, there is none of this overgrown vegetation or chaos someone's been looking after that place renovating it protecting mm. it I mean, that, look how yeah. shiny it is. Yeah, and that's a lot of clean water. We should definitely top off our water skins. Mm. Else, uh, Although, take that way back. Water source, water source like that, it's going to be guarded, right? Mm. Well, Maybe it's the um, servitor robots. Possible. Still keeping the place up. Possible. Although. Not my field gov. <laughs> James, is yes. there anything I can gather from like the servitor robots? Should they need that kind of thing? Um, 
is there any re do, is there any kind of thing I can get from why this place is pristine? Okay, uh, so that sounds like uh, unearth forgotten lore. When you uncover yeah. a landmark or custom from the past, roll plus lore. Okay, uh, I've got dice here, so my lore is plus two. So that gets me to 11. Yeah, very good. Um, Wonderful. All right, so yeah. Your question was then, um, so you're con most concerned with the water station or the machines you saw with the person you're tracking? So, Why is the water station so well preserved? Okay, uh, so you get to ask three questions from uh, the list. Uh, okay. They are... Uh, is this a wonder or a horror? Where is it drawing power from? What dangers is it hiding? And how can I turn it to my advantage? I think we'll go with the first three. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm definitely going to go with it as a wonder. This is a source of clean water that seems to be functioning completely perfectly. Uh, yep. Actually, you spot that there's a sort of network cable. Um, so a lot of the time, obviously, the everything where was linked with this wireless stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a cable that was connecting to this place underground. Um, maybe for high throughput data or whatever that has been completely sheared and pulled out of the ground. It's there's a sort of mound with this cable standing out of it. So it's not connected to the main network, and maybe it's self-powered. You think? Like there's a sort of, okay. you can hear a sort of thrum of a generator inside there, and all that was done by something, but it's possibly something that's disconnected from the network if it ever was connected. So maybe that's dangerous, maybe not. But on top of all that, because you've had this sort of revelation, your family gets a point of data that you can add to their stock. Okay, excellent. And you can spend that later to either get a lot of use out of the intel that your character has, or um, add stuff to the map. Sure, okay. I will relate that information to my companion, to Drakos. Draco. Sorry, Draco. Oh, okay, interesting. What could um, what could rip out an underground server cable like that? Could it Lots be one of, of those people? big mechanical creatures over there? I mean, that would do it, yeah. Mm. I mean, not guaranteed, but um, they'd be capable of it. Yeah. I mean, if they've done this, well, they've, they've disconnected it from the network. Yeah, that makes them pretty smart. Maybe it was something else. So that cable looks, that exposed cable looks like it's been that way for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Like years. The sort of metal at the end of it is quite rusted and mm. corroded. Sort of rub. That's rust, all right. <laughs> Did you really need to do that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wilderness thing. You would yeah. understand. So, um, are you investigating the water station or pursuing the target? And they the seem science to... stuff is cool and all, but there's a wanted fugitive right over there. The science isn't going anywhere. Okay, <laughs> but like it's it's valuable as well as being science. Yep. Which is of course valuable. And there might be pre-fall justice in <laughs> there. The, the justice. <laughs> If nothing else, there's a lot of clean water. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back here later. Hmm. All right. And what water people need to guard the water. So these giant, mo these giant mechanical creatures. Hmm. What do they look like? Are they something I've seen before? Um, possibly. They, they had a role as sort of um, forestry sort of creatures. For uh, keeping forests in check, sort of thing. So they're sort of two-legged bipedal things um, with a few different arms for like grabbing and cutting and etc. Okay. Um, I'm going to need a bigger knife. 
if we have to fight those. Um, so if I pull out um, about, like some binoculars or something and have a look, hmm. uh, you say I could see or we could see um, the, the Commodore. Hmm. Roughly from this toe, I've got like scale. How big are they compared to them? About three times a person's height. All right. And do I see um, anyone else with the Commodore? Any other humans or similar sized robots to account for the other footprints we've been seeing? Actually, you do. Uh, so, on the back of one of those robots, and you guess maybe the others as well, there's somebody who's been sort of lashed to it. And there's sort of wires coming from the robot and sort of plugging into that person's head. That's probably illegal. And <laughs> as the robot moves, the person seems to twitch a little against the bindings. I mean, this bears investigation. It's certainly odd. Yeah. How far away from me? How far away from this tableau are we? Uh, like, um, maybe 500, 600 meters. Oh, okay. Fair three. distance. Yeah. Yeah, they don't seem to have spotted you yet. All oh, right. Um,. What's around... Is it literally just jungle and then the water tower off to one side? Uh, so the water tower off to one side. It's mostly jungle, but the jungle in many ways is covering ruins and buildings. Okay. There's plenty of cover to move through. Mm. You have a weapon, right, Tashi? Yeah. Cool. Mm. I'm going to go and have a look. Stay... But we'll get a bit closer. I'll say it is. Yeah, so within range of your rifle. Yeah. Then split up and I'll like sneak around and have a look. Okay. Uh so we'll sort of zoom out from there a bit and down to uh Aquara Mer Morgan. What's up? Uh what's up is I'm just trying to piece together what documents I do and don't have. Ah. Um so, as far as I can tell, I think I have everything except I never got around to sorting out my gear. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, I think we might have sorted that out after you left last session. Yeah. That might have been what happened. I think mm. that's probably true. Should we, uh... Um... I don't know, do you want to just skim over that for this week, or...? Yeah, I mean, like... If and when it's appropriate, we can sort of stat out stuff from your gear. I mean, like, but uh, yeah. So broadly speaking, I've got. Sorry, back in a second. Uh, I've got. Uh, so, so my investments are um, awesome. armory zero, outfit two, companion zero, vehicle two, intel two. Okay, so you have some information, a cool vehicle, and uh, cool gear. Yep. That's fine. Sounds uh, about right. I'm just looking at the gear stuff. Uh... Okay. Um, all right. Well, well, my so my my factions vehicles are chrome too so they they basically just look incredibly flashy and cool um right. and are what are the sorry it's chrome what are the three uh, stats of vehicle? there's brawn chrome and well, it's not force it's something like force uh sorry i'll just bring it up <laughs> Okay, so basically they're Might they're fast and, and brawn. Yes. Okay, so the the ve the vehicles are fast and efficient, but not particularly hardy or good in a fight. Yeah. Then. Exactly. Okay, so I guess some kind of motorbike. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um. Uh. Oh, I can picture it really well. My, I think I I realised what design aesthetic fits what I was thinking, yeah. and it's basically the design aesthetic of Deus Ex Human Revolution. <laughs> okay. With, like, Lots of high of collars and triangles. Exactly, yeah. Like, the modernistic kind of 16th, 17th century thing. 
Um, yeah, and so I imagine weapon-wise, they'll just have like a pistol that looks cool but isn't particularly flashy. You know, it's literally okay. just a nine millimeter, but it just looks cool. Okay. okay. Um, cool. Uh, and uh, right. for for outfits, you get to pick. Um, so you get for free either utilitarian, camo, or regal. So basically, easily repairable, blending in with the environment, or flashy and impressive. Mm. Uh, I, I think probably like utility, because ultimately at the end of the day, they do have a job to do. Fair enough. <laughs> they can't just be all fancy all the time. Um, like they're they're not a diplomat. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I. Hello. Yes. Hey. Still hit you. Sorry, I'm uh, cutting in and out. Oh, okay. Uh, um... I think I've got you back now, though. Um, okay, cool, cool. Cool. So I think probably utility because you know they're not. Then do they do actually have a job to do? They're not a diplomat. Yeah. Um, That's fine. And uh, point of outfit investment. I can pick a tag. So. Uh, Probably, uh, it's a, with mantle. It says high tech defenses. What what kind of thing is that? Would that uh, be? So I imagine it's well, depending. It can be sort of like a force field around you, or just sort of white noise that sort of makes everyone go ah and unable to effectively aim at you, okay. or somebody else's home like field, or. Let's say ma mantle and implanted, I guess. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, okay. Right, okay, so what will we... Let's get to the actual thing. Yes. So, you're on your fancy motorbike, um, travelling through the wasteland. Where are you heading to? Um, I think I'll probably um, be heading westwards... Um, I think I think a good start for finding out a way to kind of bypass the the field, um, the ghost field. Hmm. Uh, by the way, did we establish what negative effects it has on people that prevents them from like easily traveling through it? Not yet. Okay. Weird um, ghosts. Yeah, because so... I know there was a reason why we didn't. Um, I kind of uh, imagined lots of static electricity, so you're likely to get zapped. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And like ele electronics, and like mm. won't work, and animals mm. freak out, and yeah, that kind and of was, thing. And I was thinking that those ghosts, not they are not ghosts in the traditional sense of like spiritual beings. They are the yeah. ghosts of the ghost of consciousness, like that were uploaded to the matrix, mm. and yeah. that somehow went yeah, crazy. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's kind of echoes of whatever's on the network. Yeah. I mean, we decided that some... My we... idea. Yeah. We decided that sometimes Sorry. the ghosts were very human looking and other times they were very non human looking. And so that was quite variable too. So, okay, so you're on your <laughs> motorbike. You've just sort of pulled up so... on a hill overlooking this valley, uh, just yeah. full of these antennae. So I think I. I... My first goal should be, in order to find a way to get through it, is find a w find out, like, what the antenna field was for to begin with, and where the signals originate from. I guess. Okay. Um. So, uh, I don't know if I can like basically scout for any kind of buildings like nearby that are maybe just outside of its range or okay um yeah so you can there are buildings around this place like most places that weren't a park beforehand um yeah the, the difficulty will be working out what's just outside its range hmm uh, 
know what I'm this too early than many other things I could have been doing. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. A problem when you don't quite know. My my objective is very vague. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to have like sent scouts and researchers from your family to try and investigate this? Yeah, can do. All right. Management is visiting. Yeah. Um, so, okay, you can roll me uh, conduct diplomacy then, which is a family move, to try yeah. and sort of call on allies for sort of what details they have. Okay, and that would be uh, reach. plus reach. Cool. Good. I've got a good stat reach. Uh, eight. Okay. Um, right. So, you will get the information, which is good. But your agents had to get help from a third party in finding it. Um, which of your allies helped them? Um, I'd say the, on, the uh, transistors. Okay. So the transistors get one treaty on the phantom head. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. So um, you send, you've previously sent your people to the transistors, among other people to find out more about this field and you have you know a report from your agents here that you're flicking through as you look over the field of antennae um it looks like the field is well it's not originating from anywhere which is the very curious thing uh, there's no central point it's more like a sort of mesh network of aerials, all sort of picking up and rebroadcasting the signal from their neighbours. Um, mm -hmm. It's theorised that there's like maybe there was original original signal once, but now it's sort of constantly like echoing back and forwards. Exactly. Interesting. So you get a point of data, and plus one forward acting on this information. So plus one to your next roll, uh, acting on this. But what they do what theorize is, well, if what they're seeing is a, rea is a form of feedback, possibly it can be cancelled out by the correct counter signal. Yeah. Sorry, hang on. I'm just fiddling with. No worries. Uh, okay. Do I? Uh, I don't think I don't think I remember dealing with data as a stat before. Yeah. Um, so it's just the sort of currency you have as a family that sort of. Do I start with? You, know, with none. you start with none. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. So need to find. Um, a way to cancel out the thing is it so hmm. so that there'd be no way to cut off like there's no source to cut off because where whatever sent the signal it's like has already stopped transmitting it's just bouncing around yeah so hmm. i don't know what would you what do you recommend as the don't quite sorry yeah. um... <laughs> i know what to do with that information Okay, yeah, yeah, so there's, let me think, um, so first up, you might be able to get um, enough, well, some technology to sort of uh, block out the signals from each, pe from people, if they can sort of, so essentially, actually, the best way to do it is to try and get a good sample of it, of the signal, mm -hmm. so that people can analyse it and create this counter signal. Okay. Maybe, um, so if it's like, uh, if you're getting like the echoes of consciousnesses, mm. it's, it's somehow related to the network. Yeah. I wonder if, uh, by going to one of the, um, uh, like, um, you know, network hubs. Hmm. 
it will be possible to kind of uh, get a, I guess, a, a, a sort of a simulated sort of um, like container of some kind which would pick up and store the signal. Yeah, it's possible. There's also, you know, there are people out there in the wasteland who, in the homeland, who spend their time uh, exposing their brain to the network in uh, somewhat safe ways. Uh, that's a good point. The, yes. the, who, who think of us? Who think of us as? Um, uh, who have condemned us previously? Yeah. There's always time to redeem yourself. Yeah. I mean, mm. do you have any treaty on the singulars? A good question. Uh, I do not know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you'd have to go to them cap in hand. Want, I... Oh wait, yes, I do. I have one. Sorry. All right. So you could spend that to try and get them to help you out with this. Mm -hmm. Or you could just try and ask them and see what that gets you. So, uh, sorry, just to clarify, treaty is like a currency as well. Yes. For, 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 to, okay, to get uh, cooperation, I guess. Yeah. Uh, all, right. all right. Hmm. I wonder if, um, because I've got I've got plenty of treaty on uh, the on the transistors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if I can do anything with that. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, for what it's worth, um, the standard options when you spend a point of treaty on anyone is to uh, get plus two on a move that's affecting them, to take a surplus from them, or to get them to back you up, fall into indecision, or protect something important. Well, I tell you what, I I would rather not have to deal with the fanatics, so. Uh... Uh... That's so I, I think They're rather than reasonable people, rather than having a meat body with which to to store the signal, I think God uh, will remember this. Building some kind of I didn't say it to your face. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> build, uh, Notice this everywhere. The followers will remember this. <laughs> working with um, uh, sorry. Sorry, I, you just reminded me. There's a bit in the li the first episode of Game of Thrones where Tyrion Lannister slaps, um, what's his face, Joffrey? Arse boy. Uh Yeah, and uh, and someone says to Tyrion, Joffrey will remember that. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Game of Thrones is like a <laughs> telltale adventure game. Anyway, they did. Make um, one. They did yes. Um, mm -hmm. That's what gave them the idea. Anyway, so rather than have to deal with like messy meat bodies who think silly things, um, <laughs> I will instead uh, approach the uh, transistors about the possibility of building some kind of device that could uh, receive and store the signal. That seems like a thing we could do and probably should do since apparently we own you. Yes. Um, so can I? Does that sound like a reasonable thing? Do I need to? No, it sounds good. Um, if you want to spend the point to get them to do that without any sort of argument. Yeah, I mean, I might as well. I've got, <laughs> I've got four <laughs> points of treaty with them. Yeah, spend it. Use yeah. it up. Yeah. Right. Daddy Warbucks is calling in his favour. <laughs> All right. Well. I mean, there is an issue, right, in that they are currently also working on an effort to sort of hack into the uh, Singular's access to the network and try and uh, stop that. Mm. So They I mean, are doing God's, God's work yeah, right yeah. now. They're on a mission from God. Yes. Did the Singular's pay a treaty to get them to help them? No, but they paid me. In uh -huh. people. In people. I mean, would you say it like that? <laughs> uh, well, um, you see, we're, we're, we're rather in the middle of a, a, a delicate. It's fine. They are dissidents. They don't. They don't count as people. Uh, situation at the moment, but um, 
we'll set some of our best minds onto working on such a device for you. Mm. I think, uh, you might want to consider very carefully how your future needs may involve our organization and how those needs would be better achieved through cooperation. Oh, we're down to threats, are we? What such a no, shame. No, no. Not at all. Not at all. I, I simply wanted to point out that uh, that we have a long-running business relationship, which would be bad, to, would be unfortunate and, to jeopardise for the sake of a uh, cult. And I said that we will put our best minds on coming up with such a device for you. I mean, um, I would set Toshi on it, but she's out in the wilderness somewhere. Um, but otherwise, we'll uh, put our best minds onto this. I promise you. But, I mean, she... What more can I promise? Yeah, was Nothing. That the promise is your word is golden to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never excuse us, we have some very important work to be getting onto in terms of creating a box for you that can both record and transmit. Of course, we all have important things to do. Alright. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are the singulars spending their time doing at the moment then? Are they waiting for this attack to happen or, well not attack, this hack to happen? <laughs> uh, you mean my uh, subgroup of the singulars? Let's say for, for this age when we talk about the singulars we're mostly just talking about your subgroup. Okay, uh, no not, not at all. We are we are probably already on our uh, as soon as the uh, as we uh, as soon as we have reached an agreement with the with the uh, sisters, we are on our way to continue our, uh, recruiting uh, new allies. Allies. Okay, uh, who's next up then? Uh, I think that will be the low givers, which okay. are called. The justicars of the book. The justicars. Justicars of the word. Of the word. Ah, there we are. Yep. Okay. Uh, you're pretty dispersed, aren't you, Ed? Yeah. Um, so the way it works is that um, we're sort of um, we're not the only law enforcement in the wasteland. And sort of most of the settlements, I imagine, have some kind of internal security. Mm. Um, but we're like Interpol okay. or uh, or like the FBI, so like a higher <laughs> level of law enforcement. Uh, the idea being that we provide justice when other people can't or won't, or when okay. they're too corrupt, or when people just run off into the wilderness like dicks someone has to go and fetch them um, but we have offices in most of the major settlements mm. to sort of lend a hand keep an eye you know make sure that the justice is being done by the book um, and then there will be uh, rangers like Draco sort of out and about on patrol or usually pursuing a fugitive mm. um, they're more like rugged wilderness types. Okay. So, I mean, I presume then a sort of um, one of the, well, Adriel and some of their followers um, walk up to one of these sort of field offices, I guess, in one of the settlements. Yeah. Um, oh. Let me have a look at the map. I mean, I guess they have one in the transistors tower, right? If you're sort of, sort of mm -hmm. dispersed Probably. among all the major settlements. Actually, yep. I'll just. I'll be right back, actually. Uh... Except this one. Except Dorcia. Don't we have a shitload of treaty on you? Uh... uh. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I have four treaty on you. Oh, Shit. Okay. So we've got. I had. I was thinking about this the other day. So we have a special group of Justicars, right? Who basically do forensic accounting. But, like. 
hardcore wasteland forensic accounting. Uh, uh, we set them up just to keep an eye on you. <laughs> I I mean, does the does the book of law have a section on? Yeah. It's oh, from right. it's from like a technological civilization. It has a section on whatever the, the interpreters say it has a section on. It has quite a lot on moderating internet chat rooms as well. That's pretty useful. We we try and apply that to real world civic meetings with yeah. various effect. Sounds good. Yeah, government basically follows the same structure as WhatsApp as WhatsApp groups. <laughs> you have the moderator. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we when we do the, because my like um, family power is that I can ban people from civilization. <laughs> ban IRL. You unfriend them. Yeah. They have no friends. All right. Um. So you come along to the um... regional office. Yes. I suppose it would be a chapter house. Yeah, the honest. chapter house in the transistors tower. Um, who's on duty, Ed? Um, shit. <laughs> um, uh, the guy currently in there is uh, Brother Sergeant. If I'd known, I was going to have to come up with a lot of names. I would have picked a naming theme with a bigger pool. Um, Brother Sergeant Lycurgus, okay. uh, who's a sort of middle-aged, slightly running to chub man. Um, he's got the same sort of monastic shaved head that most of the lawbringers do. Um, he's wearing, um, he's like a more sort of uniform type deal. Um, he's got like a I guess it's just like a robe um, with a belt um, lots of like a vest with lots of pockets They're, they've got like I guess sort of like a, an industrial look to them mm. um, and he looks up from the book he's reading because they like to read. Oh. Hail, citizen! Ha hello, brother. I come here seeking justice. Well, you've come to the right place. Justice are us. <laughs> <laughs> Two for one, every justice. <laughs> I seek ju justice. I seek justice. You for have my a people. justice loyalty card. So, you see justice for your people. Um, what is uh, what injustice do you claim against you? A great evil has befallen on our land and our people. Could you be more specific? <laughs> An usurpator has taken over our family and is using it for his mal devious intents. Okay, um, so did he kill some people? Um, did he steal anything? Work with me here. Um, is he committing fraud? Um, is he making ad hominem arguments in a civil meeting? Is he attempting to proliferate weapons of mass destruction? I hear some of that going around at the moment. Well, now that you mention it, <laughs> the prophet is has a, ro a rather radical point of view for for, for religion. Oh, you see, we believe that eventually humanity will ascend to to the network and be one with God. This false prophet wants to make that now and forcefully to everyone so he wants to force right okay now we're getting somewhere this sounds like a crime let me get the book <laughs> I, I, I suggest you look for g of genocide Ooh. right um 
so okay so forcibly uploading people's brains into a network is a crime under uh, um, network but, or particularly since most of them will survive the process that's probably murder <laughs> that's that's a good crime not not that there are good crimes but that's a nice solid crime um, one of the classics yeah you know can't complain about a good murder it's on the best of crime album <laughs> so and um, what evidence do you have that he's committing these crimes mm. good question will I have uh, will I have something um mm. Because, you know, I've got a backlog of cases. You think you're the only person who's got, like, a genocidal murderer who needs investigating? Um... Mm, what sort of thing would I have? So this might be a good opportunity to use uh, Find Common Ground, which is the move where you try and get someone to work with you. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, does find common ground? Uh, does plus way? How yes. good I am? Ah, I'm decent. Plus one. Um, so yeah, I think what I say is, um, I I have many witnesses with me, but I understand that will what that won't be enough. That's what I I would like to request one of your yeah. one of the members of your order. You come with me, so I can show this, you the horrors that are being this, committed. Yeah, we definitely. Oh, probably. Yeah, let's see. That's uh, eight plus one, nine in total. Okay. Yeah. So Ed, you get to pick two conditions from the find common ground list. Okay. Uh... No, I get to pick, don't I? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you want me, or you want us, what is it specifically you want us to do, your end goal, is to just go in there and do us a justice? Yeah, eventually, yes. It doesn't have to be right now, but yes. To commit to eventually bringing down the false prophet. I mean, eventually it's a word I don't like. Okay. Once we are ready. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to go with a third party vouches for you. Hmm. So if um, we can send a ranger or one of our envoys to go and have a look, meet this guy, see if he looks sketch. Um, and also. Back out as soon as the task cost him something major doesn't seem in character. Hmm. Give them something now that's worth it. Alright. Uh, yeah. What's yeah, worth I'm it? Trying to think. You have a surplus of companions or recruits, right? Uh, yes. Yes, you do. Because it so happens that the... Uh, the just cars of the word have a real need for recruits, having a bunch of us just gotten murdered by raiders. Mm. Okay. Um, now I need to figure out how I can word that injustice. <laughs> the the one, justice, the one, language one, of justice. Yeah. Yeah. All lawful creatures speak it by default. <laughs> Um, maybe that yes. I don't know. Um, so, you need right, to show on, these just, people. Yeah. Let me just. Um, this is a bit above my pay grade. Um, let me go and confer with the chapter master, and then we'll get on the horn to the chapter house in the monastery. Hmm. Goes into the back. Um, you hear like <laughs> this conversation um, on the radio, yeah. and eventually he comes back out. Yes, okay. 
he's a bit more confident now that he, like his boss has told him what he's supposed to do. Right. Okay, here's how this is gonna work. Um, we, we're gonna take your statement, um, and you know we're gonna look into this. Uh, but these are major charges you're laying against a very important person. Um, we're gonna need to you know gain some real evidence, build an airtight case against him, so we can hang him. There, so we're gonna need to launch an investigation into um, this guy. There's a guy, right? Yeah, I think so. Possibly. Um, so w what we're going to do is we're going to send some investigators in, um, have a look around, you know, um, rifle through some drawers, look through his books, you know. But the um, problem is we're quite short-staffed right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we suffered, uh, the Order suffered a major defeat at the hand of the mutant raiders from the West um, a few months ago, as I'm sure you're aware. And the pride of the Order, it lies dead on the battlefield. So we don't really have the people to get on this right mm -hmm. now. If we, because we're, you know, we're spending all of our manpower to um, reconstructing and getting our shit back together. So, if you could, you know, maybe give us some recruits, if you That's... could provide volunteers, you know, we don't conscript people, you know, people pure, I mean, you guys, you're already down with the, the network guard, so, you know, you're already halfway to being, like, pure of spirit, and <laughs> down with the books and the justice and stuff. So, if you could provide us with some trainee justicars, um, you know, people willing to take up the book, live by the gun, and swear their life to our order, understanding that they'll never be able to have a normal life or a normal family, and you can just, you know, I like, I don't know. He's, why is he looking in his watch? Like, 30 people? Like, 30 people? Probably do it. I have an alternative offer, if you will. I'm not sure this is how it works, but okay. <laughs> Out of game, if you want to say no, you can say no. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, you say you don't have the people hmm. to to go on this mission right now. Well, we don't have the people to do a lot of the things we're supposed to be doing right now, off the record. I've been trying to get a head wax resupply mm. for the last two months, and it's just not coming through. Everything's in chaos. At this moment, I need all the people that I can get. But what I could, what I could offer now is my personal help in this endeavor. I and mean, in any other important mission that you might require me. And on a long term, once I restore the faith and I and I take over over I take over my rightful place in it, I will give you the people you need. This is starting to sound a bit sketch. Um So what exactly are your skills that you're offering us here? I... I would, I would say that I'm very good at... Crime. Hmm, <laughs> not, not what I like. A special operations. The kind that require a very specific uh, set of skills. Okay, I think I see what you're trying to say here. Um, well, we need all the help we can get right now. And as as acting brother sergeant of this chapter house, I am capable of deputizing you mm. as a temporary brother marshal. What do you... Um... What do you think if, like, out of the game, we do it this way? Uh, 
to represent that you have uh, I accept like hel helping you now and to uh, represent that we have that you have the, like this agreement that I'm going to give you people in the future mm -hmm. I give you one treaty yeah and then I can cash that well, I could take one of your surpluses with that I can't yeah that's yeah. a much cleaner way of doing it yeah nice okay good yeah this is purely an investigative mission at this point fact finding mm -hmm. um, most likely Okay. All right. Um, we need to swear you in. <laughs> All right. So that happens. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Um, right. Let's go uh, back to the uh, to Toshi and Draco then. Okay. So, uh, Toshi, you're keeping watch by the uh, lizard. Uh, yes. Yeah. your quad bike. Uh, Draco, you're sneaking up towards this group yourself. Before I leave, um, I rummage around in my saddlebag a bit, and I go to Toshi. Okay, Toshi. Hopefully, this is going to go according to plan. If not, yeah, use this. Get to safety, and he holds hands you. Uh, it's like a medieval hunting horn, made out of some kind of mutated animal horn, with like a big loudspeaker megaphone sort of jammed in the end. Okay. Okay. Cool. Hello on this. Okay. Every Brotherhood Ranger within like five miles will know that you're in trouble and will come to help. Hopefully it won't come to that. Oh well everything else within five miles. No, no, fair, fair. No, that's, that's, that's I leave it up to your discretion. Hmm. I'm just gonna put that here for the moment. But I will blow it if necessary. Yeah, I, I'm sure the giant monsters won't pay it any attention. What's the right, worst can, that could happen? I can try and shoot them first. Yeah, yeah probably leave them that. So, uh, Draco, you're trying to stealthily approach. Yep. Which you can do. Put my hood up, go into stealth mode. Yep. Now I'm going to creep gonna up on their encampment. Keep them covered with my long range weapon. Okay. So, um, it looks like the. Commodore is definitely there. They're sort of. They seem to be consulting a sort of map that they have on. Um, printed on paper. Uh, it's looking somewhat glitched and messy, a lot like your um, holy texts. And. Um, they seem to be consulting it, looking at the sky, at the position of the sun, pulling out a compass, and sort of looking around because you've got to a bit of a crossroads here there's sort of three th three or four story buildings in a triangle and the path sort of splits between them so there is okay. so there's the commodore there uh who seems to be in sort of quite utilitarian uh bulky equipment um rigged for survival out in the wastelands because they don't have any friends um you have two of these big robot things uh, with people strapped to the back of them and a couple of sort of more um, emaciated looking people like people who haven't don't seem to have a lot of experience being outside and uh, walking about and stuff mm. lurkers exactly um, although those two do seem to have um, guns small pistols both of them Right. How far away from them am I at the moment? Um, as far away as you want to be. Okay, so I'm pretty close. I'm like lurking behind a building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Commodore's in the middle of all of them. Hmm. I'll just... Okay. My explosive lances are back on the lizard, unfortunately. Oh dear. Because they are too big to sneak with. Hmm. Okay, so my lizard can <laughs> stalk on its own, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm gonna give it the pre the pre they're very well trained. I'm gonna give it like a little pretend bird call signal. 
Okay. That it knows means sneak off on your own and cause a distraction over there. Okie dokie. Uh, With the that I can draw some of them away to make my um, advance easier. Because what I want to do, ideally, is distract some of the guards so that I can run in and nab the Commodore. Okay. All right, um, interesting. Um, that sounds like under orders, then? Yeah, what do I roll for that? It's just 2d6 uh, plus quality, right? Yes. Can you roll me some dice, please? Certainly. The first dice is a 2. The second dice is a 5, so that's 7. What's their quality? Plus 1. Okay, nice. Uh, so choose one. It's done, but not as completely or successfully as you'd like. It's done, but there'll be unfortunate consequences. Or it's done, but it hurts them. Their quality drops by one. Oh no, nothing can happen to the riding lizard. I mean, yeah, sad. if you pick that one, they will be of no use to you any longer. Um, I'm going to go with it's done, but not as completely or as successfully. Okay. So uh, the lizard goes off to some distance, and you see sort of one of the building, one of the other buildings of the three rumble as the shock lance discharges, and uh, you know birds scatter, flatter up, and um, one of the giant robots and two the two um, guys walk up, sort of head over there, to sort of to try and see what's up. So there's just the giant robot and the commodore there. Right. Can I try and shoot the giant robot? Yes. Because I have a long distance sonic rifle. Yeah. So if, there's, if the other two have wandered off, and it's clear what he's doing, then can I try and hit it? I don't see why not. That, that's going to be a steel roll though, isn't it? Uh, no, that's going to be force. Oh, okay. That's, that's better. That's good. Um... I mean, it's still plus zero, but it's better than minus one. <laughs> so is your intent to hurt, capture, or drive off this creature? Uh, I think my intent is to drive off. Okie dokie. Although it is made of tech. Yeah. So actually, no, um, incapacitate it, like take it down. Okay, I think. cool. Um, in which case, uh, roll plus force. Uh, seven. Oh, no, okay. six. Six oh. even. Six. Oh. Fail. Oh, that's a bad. That's a bad miss. Well, that's a bad miss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, hmm. um, okay, I'm going to say your shot goes wide. So it's a sort of sonic thing, right? So it sort of, in some ways, is like a big look over here sign. Yeah. All right, so this sound blast goes off and it sort of flies through the air towards them, but then just sort of goes past them and impacts in the building next to it, which sort of shakes and vibrates. And the sort of, the yeah. bipedal sort of robot sort of bends down and sort of looks around to, but it sort of immediately sort of twists around to where, towards where you are, and then sort of, roars a sort of staticky roar and starts stomping towards you. Um, uh, Draco, you see the Commodore sort of duck behind cover and sort of look around to see what's going on. Shit. Okay, so when I attack from stealth, it causes confusion and there'll be a period of confusion for me to exploit. Yes. Right. So... Ah, uh, do I save my friend, or do I catch a criminal? Hey, I haven't been caught yet. I've yeah. still got my buggy I can run away on. Yeah. All right, that solves that problem. Um, so... Justice must prevail. Yep. The Commodore ducks behind a wall. Okay. And I simply appear from behind that wall and put my gun to the back of their head. All right. Don't move. Hands where I can see them. All right. Uh, that sounds like a. Um, yeah, actually, they put their hands up. And, ah, they say. 
Okay. I'm now. not resisting, officer. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> but right. you may have an issue quite soon. Yeah, well, that's future me's problem. Now, back up. Put your hands behind your back. They put their hands behind their back. And then I cough them. <laughs> okay, you are under arrest and having your account suspended on two counts of breaking and entering, um, 25 counts of releasing a prisoner, one count of attempting to proliferate uh, WMDs, uh, resisting arrest. You have no um, idea what we're trying to do here, do you? No, I don't. I don't care. Hmm. Fascinating. Uh, so over to you, Ellie. Uh, so this bipedal forestry robot has sort of is sort of leaning low now, and it's uh, you can see two of its arms have sort of grabbers about right for grabbing tree trunks, and yeah. two of them have chainsaws suitable for performing tree surgery. Right. I mean, it, it, I, it's. I, I... It's just a garden. So I, I mean, nothing to worry about. I'm going to grab the horn, just mm. in case. I don't think we're in that much trouble yet. Okay. Um, I'm going to leap into my buggy, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try and run away. Okay. Um, that sounds like yeah. So that probably is defuse when you try when you deescalate a charge situation with uh, quick action. Roll plus steel. <laughs> <laughs> and if your vehicle has any uh, chrome, you get to add that to this. No, it's got brawn. Nah. That's good for Maybe long that distance. Be... So that's why you should buy your vehicles from the FCL. <laughs> yeah, less, your, your vehicle's less good at peeling out of here. Alright. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, let's see how this goes. Roll. Ooh! That's ten! Hey! All right. That's even on a minus one. That's amazing. Nice. Uh, so as the thing sort of starts charging at you, there's a moment where you almost freeze up, but then you jump on your vehicle on on your quad bike and just sort of roar out of there, ducking between the trees with it sort of dropping away behind you. Sure. Once you're a bit safe, do you blow the horn or are you good? Do you just want uh, to see what happens? I'm inclined to circle back round. I mean, the ten's quite a good roll. Yes. I, I kind of want to circle back round to be able to maybe run away again as a distraction if um if Ed needs me. So I want to or give just pick me up. Or just pick you up. You've got a lizard. I can't pick the lizard up. <laughs> All right. So uh, Draco, you've got this. Uh, you've got the Commodore with your gun to their head. Mhm. Mm um, you can hear sort of stomping. Ambient stomping of robots approaching. Right. Um, I whistle for my lizard mm. and then withdraw further into the building with the Commodore in tow. Oh, well, I don't need to keep a gun on it, I've got her in cuffs. Uh, sort of leading them by the scruff of their neck into the building trying to evade pursuit. Okay. Alright. And also keep control of my cat too. Yeah, yeah. So as you go into the building, they, um... So they, I guess their hands have been cuffed behind them. Yeah. Alright, alright. Um... So... As you pull them into the building, you notice that they're sort of cloak... They're sort of well, their, their suit under the, their sort of travelling cloak is quite fancy, quite sort of augmented. I said they had all sorts of things dedicated to surviving in the wasteland, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of them you notice is a, um, there's like an air rebreather of some kind. The sort of little right. tubes going up into their nose. And, well, how, what, what, for whatever reason, you're essentially drawn to that as they seem to be as they try and sort of stamp down with one foot and you hear a sort of shattering like a glass capsule going well shit um, I 
doubt I have anything. Oh wait, I have a gas mask, but I probably can't sit and fumble with that and control the prisoner. Um, so you can try and get to safety and put it on. You can try and put it on while and hope that it's, you don't lose control of them, or you can just try and tough it out. I don't think toughing out poison gas is a particularly <laughs> smart move. Just hold your breath. Um, Come on, man up! <laughs> That's how it works. Hero up! Hero up! Um, or drag yeah. them outside. Sorry, what floor am I on? Uh, so you're on the ground floor at the moment. Um, I'm just going to try and like, throw it to the ground and fumble with my mask. Okay. Try and get it on in time without giving them a chance to run away. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that's another D fuse, probably with either steel or force. Probably steel. Because it's about okay. what you can do this quick um, enough and have that enough. That for me, please. Yeah, sure. So, nine on the dice. Um, my steel is plus one, I think. Hey, good job. Yes. I am so steely. Right, right so situation is safe unless dramatically disrupted. Yes. And it's, yes, the situation here being poison gas. Mm. Right. Now we can add attempted murder of a Justica to your rap sheet. Depending on what that gas is, that might be another WMD charge. We'll find out when we get you back to the chapter house. And then I'll um, drag her out the back of the building in the direction of Toshi. Less of that. Driving around. Alright, so you're retreating out of the building, and at this point you can see sort of... Well, that, that sort of... Um, they People seem to have noticed the sort of gas smoke sort of billowing within the building, and are looking inside, but not, you know, too closely, because that's poisonous mm. gas. Yeah. Um, and you can see one of the other sort of bipedal robots sort of craning round the side, sort of looking for you. Um, can I hear um, either my lizard or Toshi getting closer? Well, I mean, you can summon your lizard, can't you? Yeah, I mean, I whistled for it earlier, but it was a ways oh, yeah. off distracting those guys, so I don't know how long it'll take to get here. Hmm. I'd say it's getting no. close. It's coming around the corner, sort of pursued okay. by one of those other robots. Right. Um, hi ho, Silver. I'm just going to book it for my lizard. Okay. Uh, try and like sling the Commodore over the back, Red Dead style, <laughs> and then run for it. All Exit right. stage left, pursued by a robot. Okay. Um, awesome. Uh, the lizard comes by, you throw the Commodore on the back of it, and ride off to where Toshi is waiting with her quad bike. Start moving! That way! That okay, way! Okay, okay. Uh, I might be slightly being pursued. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Oh, lovely! There's a lot of that going around. <laughs> all right. The two of you drive off. Um, all right. Zoom out again. Uh, Mo Lawrence, what are you up to? So you're waiting uh, on the Enclave to get some sort of device for you, yes? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I guess I might as well go and do something else, I suppose, right, until they get back to me. Well, I mean, I'll say that there's probably... They kind of whipped something up in this amount of time. What would I need to roll to do that? Because yeah. it's something right. I want to do. I, I need think... to spend treaty on it. So... Yeah. I mean, I think, to be honest, considering that this is the sort... That you're able to get the singulars to plug into the network, this is just... This isn't too big an ask, like... Just something that can okay. sort of, just a box that can sort of hold recordings is sure. the sort of thing that you might need to have. So you're just sort of hooking a wireless antenna up to that isn't too big a thing. Okay. Cool. Right. I'll do that. 
do that then. Okay. So the transistors present you with this uh, small box um, with a few sort of wires trailing away from it. Ah, lovely. Uh, so if you press this button here, it's for record, and then playback is if you fiddle with these dials here. You can vary the different frequencies and volumes accordingly. Uh, read out on the little uh, uh, screen here. Lovely, thank you. Have a profitable day. Uh, you too. Oh, oh, and if it goes bing, that's perfectly normal. <laughs> Good. I like it when things go ping. Mm. Um, all right, I guess so. I, I suppose I'll um, drive back. I don't know how far it is, so I'm not quite sure how long that'll take me. Um, mm. And uh, I'd noticed before. Does that take me through? Because that's like near where the m mutant raiders did stuff. Yes. Are they kind of in that general area? Yeah, they're they're, in, they're across the whole sort of northwestern area. The sweep. Um, so it's difficult quite to know quite where they are at the moment. Okay. Yes, um, I, I just hope I don't run into any. I suppose. Well, it's probably worth a wasteland survival roll. Is that on the... Oh, there it is. Yep. Okay. Uh, and that's plus steel. It's three. Ooh. Ooh, that, 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 that's not a good one. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you have a uh, tech attunement, yes? I have what? Tech attunement. Yeah. There's a scavenger move. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you're um, traveling through the uh, jungly sort of highways back towards the antennae. Um, when you feel a sort of tingle from your sort of from your acquisition implants of uh, something valuable being close okay which obviously you know piques yeah. your interest well worth, uh, well worth the look but uh, then it becomes very clear what the valuable thing is as um, a group of people drop down from the sort of jungle canopy above um, some in front of your bike some behind as it's driving along and you see one of them le levying a sort of weird sort of it looks like it's sort of an a radio antenna that someone's put, put a trigger to and a shoulder stock okay and they point it directly at your motorcycle which uh Whose engine cuts out? Ah, yeah. lovely. Um, okay, so uh, can I can I come to a stop safely, or is this going to result in a crash? Uh, well, that sounds like a uh, what's the word? Um, defuse roll. But I'll say that your gun, your not your gun, your motorbike does not help with this because it is inactive. Okay, so uh, I'd say endurance or quick action would Sounds make good. the most sense. If that's the approach you're taking. Uh, that is eight. Okay. Uh, I'd choose one. Uh, GM will demand something from you. It's only a temporary reprieve. The danger's still present, but threatening someone or someone else. Uh, I guess the GM will demand something from you in order to secure safety. Okay. Um, so, the thing is that that... So they're advancing on you, but they, they seem to be sort of rival scavengers. Um, a lot like you. Um, probably if you just sort of abandoned the bike and legged it off into the jungle 
they would be more interested in the bike than you. Hmm. That's fair. That's a good point. Uh, sorry. So this diffuse role is a more general one for the whole situation, not just well, uh, yeah. avoiding crack. Um. Basically, um, or um, if you could, hmm. uh, um, just sorry. If if it's more specifically about about uh, avoiding crashing, yes, might I suggest that I can get off it safely by jumping into a nearby load of foliage, but that it crashes and is wrecked. Yeah, that that, that would also work. Yeah. Um, right, or we'll sort of slide, continue sliding until it's right up next to them. Hmm? Yeah, so you jump off uh, into a yep. bunch of foliage. Uh, it continues sort of sliding and skidding along the road out of sight. Okay. Um, so what, what's my what's my sit rep? Uh... All right. So you, as you're driving along, you sort of spotted, obviously you spotted the group in front, and you can still sort of sense that weird antenna cannon um, a bit ahead of you. Um, you did spot a couple of them behind you as well, but those were armed far more mundanely, like sort of uh, an improvised weapon made from a sort of shard of glass wrapped with cloth, um, a sling. Hmm. Okay. I think, uh, how many would you say there were, roughly? Uh, I'd say actually three. The two that were behind you and the one that jumped down in front with the stop gun. Okay. So, I mean, I, I outgun them, but, like, in that I actually have a gun. <laughs> um, but, yes. uh, there are three of them. So Okay, I'm I'm going to uh get my pistol out. Yeah. And then I'm gonna shout out Can you hear me? We hear you. I have a deal to propose. Start talking. So, there are three of you, and there are one of me. However, I have a firearm. One way or the other, this is going to end in several of us being injured. So I suggest that you take my bike, and I leave. Uh, give me a sway roll. Okay. That is uh, 12. Okay. Sure, I'll take that. There's one of them. Pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> Did really like that bike. Did just. Yeah. Uh, Alright, and I guess I'll go on my way. <laughs> oh well. On foot. Yeah. But eventually you make your way to the uh, field of antennae without further incident. Good, good. Okay, so to capture a signal, I'm probably going to have to go in there. Seems likely, yeah. So... Hmm. Using my... Do you, do you think my tech attunement could give, give me a sense of uh, where the field kind of starts and ends? Yeah, I think so. But... This is probably actually a good use for Architectural Eye as well. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, yeah. All right, I'm all right. I'm going to. Um... Okay, cool. Uh, all right, I'll I'll roll for Architectural Eye then. To plan out my expedition into the field. Mm. That. Ten. Nice. All right, so you got three points to spend down the road on uh, identifying and tracking a danger within the ruin, using the ruin as a weapon, and rolling steel to navigate through rough terrain in there. 
Okay. So, uh, you get an idea of roughly where the antennae are, and yes, with those sort of implants that you've got, you get a vague sense of where the field begins and ends. So you think there's probably a sort of... I mean, what's the plan? Do you want to get somewhere where you're only just in the field? No, cause I don't think I'll get a very strong signal. I think I, I want to be near at least a couple of antenna. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, probably spending one of my holds at the start to kind of identify any a potential danger. Um, okay. So, yeah. So there's actually, you can see in the sort of, there's a sort of haze in the field um, that seems to be sort of manifesting slight sort of will-of-the-wisps moving through it, like uh, little sort of balls of faint distortion in the air. And you reckon those are possibly the ghosts that people have been talking about? Or at least a sign of them before they decide to manifest fully. And there's um, one particular large one that you're keeping an eye on as you move through, as you get close to the field. Okay. Sort of timing yourself to not get near it. Right. So I'll head deeper in, try and avoid that stuff. Hmm. Um, and uh, I guess when I'm far in enough, just put the device down, press the button. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'm going to say this probably... Um, yeah, this probably works well enough for an unleash power, which is just a way of using a device to record, to do stuff. So yep. I will say that because there is this pervasive cyber psychic field around here and you're not particularly um, protected against it mm -hmm. uh, this will be rolling with disadvantage okay so take three dice roll three dice and take the two lowest uh nine nice <laughs> okay uh so there's a list of would have been 12 without the disadvantage. Oh, it's still a pretty good roll. Yeah, not bad, not bad. All right. Okay, so on a pick three, that, uh, shouldn't that, okay, I think... Yeah, those, those should be reversed, those should be reversed. Yeah, yeah, okay, pick two then. Um, I'll pick, the device does exactly what you wanted, and you don't rouse other devices in your environment. Okay. So the device can't be used again, and you don't avoid its right. side effects, whatever those are. Okay. Okay. Um, there's so you turn it on and sort of hold it up into the field, and it's it starts pinging rapidly, incredibly rapidly, which you've been told it's meant she, to do. You told the truth about the pinging. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then there's a sort of brief moment of duality. Where it's like you're seeing the world from two separate perspectives. Uh, you sort of try and shake your head, but it sort of continues. And actually, this time you see your head shaking from through a sort of staticky lens. And mm. just at the same time as you're viewing out of your eyes as well. And there's this sort of weird disorientating harmonising as... You seem to be seeing from the perspective of you in the of the box as well as from your own head. Hmm, that's unnerving. Hmm. Uh. But okay. you know the the box pings in a sort of I'm done sort of way. Alrighty, I'll put it back in my bag and get the hell out of there. Yeah, so now at least you're only seeing darkness from that perspective. Oh, so this is permanent. Oh, for the time being. It hasn't gone away yet. Okay. I might be able to find uses for that, actually. <laughs> I'll right. just leave this box in this room. Don't worry about it. Continue having your conversation. <laughs> All right. Um, but 
Yeah, so the rest of the field, the antennae field, is going on as if nothing has changed. So you can sort of keep an eye on those weird ghosts and move around where they're not and get out of here. Cool. All right. So, over to you. Oh, before Angel. we, um, Ooh, yeah, we yeah. zoom out, sorry. Yeah. Um, if you look in the chat... Ooh, there's a chat. Um, uh, I've post uh, stuck an image in there. Um, ah, yes. It's, it's on a blank background, so you can't see any of the text. Hmm. I've just quickly knocked up a um, like a an aid or graph for plotting who has treaty on who. Oh yeah, cool. you'll have to download it and open it because it's got a black back. It's got like a transparent background. You can't read it. I can see it. I can read it. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, okay. It's just me that can't. <laughs> well, it, it, I can see it when you pasted it, but when I tried to open it, it came out black. Yeah. Huh. That's okay, weird. well, if you download it, it should be fine. But yeah. that's what I was trying to explain. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I have indeed mm. noted it down on the paper next to me just before <laughs> that. Yeah. Inspired nice. by your face. Okay. Um, yeah, I might see about doing something similar like that for um, character sheets then. At the moment, I just have a sort of table with one column of just sort of writing numbers in them. Uh, but. Cool. Alright, so actually, um, I realised uh, there is a specific move that triggers when you zoom out after spending time with a significant group of characters, which maybe would be useful for you, Angel? I don't know. Uh, so I was just thinking about that particularly, in fact. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a good opportunity while we are preparing for, for the expedition to um, spread the word of, of of the singulars among the people of the of the transistors in okay. a quiet way. We don't, you know, authorities have a thing against sometimes against you know preaching. Hmm. But if I could find a, a few loyal followers, I, I'm sure they'll they will benefit from the faith as well. Okay. So you're getting a point of treaty on the transistors? Uh, oh, no, I was thinking about using the move... Uh, what is it? Uh, um, the Sacred Army move. Oh, right. From okay, my, right. <laughs> from the Firebrand. All right, nice. Um, so, yeah. So basically, when I spend a couple of days training rebels in an area, you don't have when I don't have any followers. Again, followers of quality one, which one speciality which is going to be a spine. Okay. Uh, um, basically, I want them to leave, leave them here All right. to make to make sure that the the transistors are are doing what they promised. Just nothing else. Okay. Yes. So, you, so you've turned a few transistors to your cause and have left them here to report back to you. Yeah, basically, the way I approach it is I is uh, I use their thirst for knowledge. I tell them that although el el earthly knowledge, earthly understanding is, they have reached a, a good of the understanding of earthly things. In the network with God, there's much more to know and discover. <laughs> Alright, I like it. Alright, and then I suppose you're heading off with some of the Justicars to scout out this false prophet. Yes. Alright. So, yeah. Um, what sort of efforts are you going? Are you taking to get to Yeah, okay, it's like... Alright. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm just going to guide them um, secretly, of course, uh, to the how is this place called? The place where the prophet is right now, the the Anastasios. The Anastasios. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to lead them there stealthily, and I'm going to uh, show them all the uh, horrendous things that are going on. 
or that I expect that are going Wait, on. wait, wait. Back up, back up, back up. Stealthily. Yeah. We're here in an official capacity, right? We're here, right, officially representing justice. We're not going yes. to sneak in through a window. Like, procedure but... for... Like, we're just going to walk up, and we're just going to be like, dum, dum, dum. You know, you, you're accused of false profiting. We demand to look through your stuff. I, I, although, all, all that is well and good. Um, I think a more uh, subtle approach will be better now. Isn't there um, undercover agents? Um, hmm. Are there? Not really. Not in the sense that modern police forces have them. Um, well, it, we I maintain think informants. A, uh, I think this is a good opportunity to to teach you. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think you will find that we people. Have, we probably have. Um, like one or two, like a. We probably have a chapter house there. We're close with the church. Hmm. Um, have you spoken the with them house, recently? The chapter house there are probably closely aligned with the prophet hmm. or with the um, status quo, at least. Right. Yeah, yeah. The, yes, the Prophet has a tendency to intoxicate all the people he touches. Okay. That's why, that's why I believe that we cannot trust anyone and that we should do this. Right. Okay. So anyone who gives me information counter to what you've told me is mind controlled and I shouldn't trust them. <laughs> that's what you're telling me. No, I think, I think what what you'll see, just trust what you see, and that will be more than enough evidence. And to see, we must go. Well, the book teaches us to weigh both sides of the grievance before coming to a judgment. Of course, I expect no less. Mm -hmm. So, let's see, where are we geographically? No, we're not that far. Mm -hmm. No, just next tower over, basically. Yeah. Um, let me pack some sandwiches, you know. <laughs> Saddle up my riding lizard. <laughs> uh, what, question, where, where should I mark or take a note of my new um, followers? Um, hmm. Just... I wouldn't say these are particularly your followers yet. Mm -hmm. Well, as in they're people that you're working with, but no, I mean, I mean, I mean the oh right the people like yeah the ones I created with the secret oh, yeah. army move. Um yeah, just write them down on your uh, character page, I guess. Yeah, yes. Uh, spies in the transistors, quality one, spying. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so I mean, you've made the journey from the transistors tower to the Anastasios, and you can see, you know, it's sort of packed with pilgrims who have made the journey from across the homeland to see this grand revival that is happening in the faith, and. Um, you can see that actually uh, there's this big sort of structure that's been built outside the front of the tower. Um, it looks like sort of a giant sort of video screen uh, on a pylon. The, the pylon mm -hmm. itself is sort of wound tight with cables and um, coming off the bottom of the pylon are sort of dozens of little sort of terminals, little um, or the ends of those cables, I suppose. And you can see a few people sort of plugged into them. Uh, this looks legit. Yes, like a legit weapon. Well, don't 
you know, a, isn't a large portion of the faith, you know, plugging yourself into the network to gain enlightenment. Not at this scale, this kind of thing, humanity is not ready for this. Um, okay, I'll take that under advisement. Okay, come on, come on, let's take a look. I I, th I think I actually want to explain this to you. I, I, I say, have you ever been to the ghost field? To the what, sorry? The ghost field. No, I'm afraid I haven't. Have you heard stories about it? Um, I mean, only the basic theological training we get at the, uh, the monastery. We're more of like about applied religion. If if the prophet gets what they want, most people will become that remnants of their former beings, spirits of of their of mind. Okay, and let, well, we're definitely going to have to go in and take a look at this just to sort this all out. Of course. Get to the bottom of it. Alright. Lycurgus is currently um, of the mindset that some crazy religion, some crazy religious nutter has walked into his office <laughs> and said, Guys! Guys! This prophet dude! He's totally bad. He's gonna kill everybody. Can you come in and like kill him so I can have his job? <laughs> so the, yeah. he's a little skeptical, um, but you know it's his job to investigate. So no, um, so I, I imagine he sort of strides proudly forward. To yeah, sort of I, I, I have every right to be here. Yeah, it's like. Hail the nearest official, near cleric, priest. Well, that's difficult for you to tell. I mean, who's in charge here? They're all wearing the same sort of utilitarian robes. Like hail citizens. Some... I try to hide my face as as well as I can. Cool. Some of them uh, turn to look at the group of you, but most of them seem not particularly in interested. Most of them are sort of actually. Uh, standing around looking at that great screen, which um, there's sort of shifting patterns being sort of displayed on it at the moment. Nothing you can particularly work out as any clear image, but um, this weird shifting mandala. Well, that's probably not good. Right. That's, that's definitely a health and safety violation. <laughs> Someone could get hurt. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to say. I hope you have uh, oh, PPE equipment. Yeah, she should probably be wearing safety goggles. Mm -hmm. Firewalls. Speaking of which... <laughs> okay. Uh, you, citizen. Yes? Hail, justice be with you. Who's in charge here? The Prophet. Where is he now? Can you take me to him? I can. Kindly do so. We have. We wish to ask him some questions. They sort of pick themselves up off the floor slowly, sluggishly, and sort of start wandering towards the sort of entrance to the tower. When I turned and look at Adriel, it's probably best if you stay here. As you say. I mean, you definitely wouldn't... Uh, that's exactly what you're going to do, right? Just stay there and not get up to any funny business? Well, yes, of course. Good. I, I knew I liked the cut of your jib. That's why I swore you in and deputised you. <laughs> I'm such a good judge of character. All right, and, and then you, I, and then you follow this. I allow them to be led. Yeah, yeah. To the prophet. Yeah, mm -hmm. great judge of character. Uh, so, uh... Adriel, what are you doing instead of what you just said you were doing? Huh. Um, so how, how much time do I have? Um, and so it's probably quite packed, the crowds here. So even if, you know, they go directly to the Prophet, if that person takes them directly to the Prophet, which seems unlikely because they were quite 
sluggish and dazed looking. Um, it's still going to take you know at least you know half an hour or more to actually get to them through the mass of people. Mm. So I could expect to have a few hours, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like hypothetically enough to um, cook up cook uh, an explosive device. Yeah, I mean, oh, to be honest, I'd say. Oh, what beer? There. Yeah, that, that's the main question: is what's what's the chemicals you're using for this? Um. Well, they are obviously building something. Yeah. And they're probably using a lot of equipment. Um, at least this is like a high tech, high level technology. This, I, I, I'm sure they could, I could steal something. Well, and also, I suppose this used to be one of the uh, Matrix towers, so yeah. probably they have all sorts of weird life-sustaining chemicals just sort of lying around, not being used. And I've I've, I've spent a lot of time here. I yeah. I know this place. All right. Okay, sure. So you know that there's um, a stock, uh, but there's sort of a a few chemical tanks around the side, where mm -hmm. the um, the bio chemical things I don't know uh, were stored um, medicines and such for people uh, lying in their pods. But um, you can make use of those for sure. Okay. I'll do that. All right. So you, so you um, spend a few hours busying yourself, uh, tinkering with these chemicals, mixing them in sort of uh, ad hoc containers, until eventually you sort of got things down to a sort of moldable putty that, well, will do what you want. Uh, should I say what I want now, or? I mean, um, you have the stock. Uh, so, I mean, about this time, uh, so Ed, mm -hmm. uh, you have gone into the uh, tower, mm -hmm. you have ha been introduced to the Prophet, who is a wonderful person, just... So nice. Just dazzling. Um, you feel a bit sore on the back of the neck, but, I mean, whatever. Um, and obviously there is nothing to worry about here. I mean... I, as I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, you probably, I mean, would you have sort of informed this person about the vile slander being spread about them elsewhere? Um, I wouldn't have, you know, you know I, this isn't his first justice rodeo. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit circumspect, you know, it says we've received reports, you know, from sources, you know, They've been making allegations of potential genocide. <laughs> and we just wanted to come over and, you know, have a look, do what justice demands, which is that we investigate. But mm. obviously we were mistaken. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Fine upstanding citizens plugging themselves into creepy hypnosis pods. I mean, Who hasn't done that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Bit weird of, is as weird does. So yeah, I mean, so you're leaving the tower. Um, weirdly, well, I mean, you can't really remember what it was like inside. Or it anything, was fine. But it's fine. It's fine. Um, and yeah, so what are you doing, Adriel? This is a few hours later. Um. Hmm. I want to uh, organize a sort of. I think uh, I think the evidence the 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 brother of the law needs it's going to be quite hidden. So I'm going to produce some evidence of the atrocities of the prophet. Okay. Uh, yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. that no, I'll you, Angel. Go for it. Okay, basically, I want to uh, to cause an explosion uh, that kills or hurts people and somehow made it look uh, like it was uh, the fault of the prophet. Okay. Like it was some kind of 
ritual, like sadistic ritual. Oh, okay. So I'm probably going to use some, uh, like a, an, an actual ritual that I know is like happens here uh, every night, probably, hmm. and kind of hijack, hijack it. All right. So you sort of join the group, I suppose, as they are, I don't know, reciting the utterances of the, of the oracle of the day, or or rather hearing the utterances of the oracle of the day and, you know, saying prayers in response to that. Yeah, and I want to time it perfectly, so, uh, so if possible, uh, I want to leave this, this explosive to, to detonate exactly when I, when I'm far enough from the action that I will not be linked to it, and when the the brother of the law is coming back to see it in a in a mm -hmm. prefer in a preferable seat. Just a just a suggestion. Yeah. Uh -huh. Could there maybe be an agent of the Fountainhead Commerce League in the camp for some reason? They could. Uh -huh. Why? Because you haven't had anything to do for a while. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's a legit reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I was just wondering if I could do anything like I said I tried help with to yeah. try and disrupt the mental connection that the prophet oh, has. Oh, at the same time. At yeah. the same time. Yeah, that will be good. most excellent. I can't uh, so... hear all this terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all right, it's all going on okay. in the electronic sphere. You'll never know about it. Um, do you want to have someone there, Lawrence? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the the prophets arrived fairly recently, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a there's a representative of the FCL there because they're like going there to talk to the new leader about maintaining their existing deals and things like that. Hmm. Um, so oh. does that oh. make sense? Oh, hmm? another big thing, big thing of this horrible ritual. Uh, Possibly. So, um, Lawrence, um, what are they called? Percival. All right. So Percival, assuming they're outfitted similarly to Morgan. Yeah, like I imagine. Yes. So you've just come out of a meeting with the prophet, with the prophet, after they've met um, a member of the Just Cars. It looks like. Um, and you're going through it and, you know, taking logs and sounds like, and you have this feeling that it all went well and yes, they're definitely someone you can continue trading with. But then your sort of implanted medical diagnostic starts sort of flashing up warning signs. Interesting. What was it saying? Um, th there's been, well, th a minor wound at the back of the neck. Hmm. And then further things are flashing up of sort of irregularity detected in frontal cortex. Okay. Hmm. Is the wound is it, uh, is it consistent with like an injection or? Yeah, yeah. A, a very thin and narrow and deep. Okay. Okay. So. Hmm. There might be some. Uh... That's interesting. So, do I, do I know the Justicar is here? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you saw them leaving as you went into your uh, thing. And now, actually, as you think back, your um, automated sort of these the sort of implants in your systems. Um, when you look at those memories, actually, they're, they're sort of flashing up sort of question marks and exclamation points. Like, mm. over, like... So you remember talking to the Prophet, right? And talking through these details. But now, like, these things, these diagnostics are saying, well... You do realise you can't actually remember any specific words. And you do realise you can't actually remember what they looked like. This person, and all that sort of thing. Okay. So you're sitting outside, uh, sort of, pondering this. Okay, so if I can find the... Just a car. I'd like mm. to go and talk to them. Um, Not making a secret of his location. Yeah. All right. So I'll approach him and say, uh, ah, "Good day, just a car." Hail, citizen. Justice be with you. And also with you. Uh, 
sorry, my name's uh, uh, Acquirer Percival. I was wondering, did we, I saw you coming out of your meeting with uh, the Prophet. Yep. Did you have a productive meeting? Yeah, everything was. We had some concerns, um, you know, but they've been allayed. Seems like it was a bit of a false alarm. These things happen from time to what time. What did you talk about? Um. Uh. Justice. Um. <laughs> Tell me, is your neck hurting? A little bit. Yeah, I thought it was one of those tiny little fly robots we get around here. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I have reason to believe that uh, we have been medically tampered with in some fashion. Could it be now when I arrive back to yeah, yeah. meet with? Uh, so I approach from somewhere, and I say, "I see you have met the prophet." Yes, he seems. They seem. Pretty legit. I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. Legit sure. in any specific way? The words they say? Uh, the, the, I think the they face he has? Us maybe some books, I, I think. Um, let, me check my, let me check my notebook. Uh, oh. Yeah, you didn't take, make any notes. That's very strange. They are very big on writing things down in training, so... Uh, yeah, that is strange. Medically tampered? I think I'd know if I'd been medically tampered with. Would you? Like, you will know the face of this man? Like, you will remember his words? Uh, he was kind... <laughs> tall? I, I want to say tall. <laughs> Maybe. 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 I just the car. I, I don't uh, want. Like I want know. <laughs> or maybe not. One of those two. Uh, if I may suggest, the faith has quite a lot of experience in tampering with other people's mind. Don't you think it's possible that he's doing the same with you? I'm sure my uh, my equipment is showing anomalies in my cerebral cortex. Let's put a pin in. We have a lot of experience in altering people's minds. Willingly, most most of the time. Okay, that's a great. Idea. In most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, do say when you want that bomb to go off. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do let me yes, know if there's anything I need to do for the disruption of the thing as well. I presume um, you've timed the bomb to go off at the point where you want the disruption to go off. Uh, timing bombs, they too risky. I, I have a guy who's going to kamikaze his, himself into, to do it. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I really That's recall close. the martyrs mm. of mm. the faith. Mm. So... Your religion gets more legit by the day. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you know. <laughs> at any rate... At any rate, Justicar, uh, I believe it would be in the best interest of justice and uh, profitability if uh, we could feel safe to make trade deals without feeling like our minds are being altered. Yes. Feeling safe, huh? And that's when the bomb is blown. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's not suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there's a... Big, I presume you're picking a uh, spread fire over a city block sized area. Is that about right? Or bring uh, down a structure as big as a house? Uh, I think... You said that there was this kind of uh, TV, gigantic TV mm. thing, right? I think one of the columns of the of the what is uh standing on is going to explode okay uh, yeah just as they were like all praying to 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 god uh and probably one of probably not the prophet because the prophet you don't really get to see him but one of the one of the close followers of the prophet was doing his, his speech um interpreting the word of god yeah exactly when one of the 
uh, followers of the Prophet was connecting himself to the network to to spread out the word of God to the people. That's when it goes off and that's when the network goes down. Okay, uh, so Ellie, uh, do you <laughs> yeah. want me, do you want to roll, um, I think this is seized by force, no, uh, claimed by force, sorry, um, oh, dear. of your family to uh, seize control of the network from the... Uh, yeah, I'm on grass minus one though, it's a problem. Singulars. Um, is there any way to leverage something like lend aid instead, since I'm lending aid to his family? Mm. And then... Uh, I was thinking actually that that would be like, uh, what would happen. Okay. That would do something. Alright, alright. Um, so I don't what... feel like I'm taking it for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, so, are you going to try and roll claim by force then, Angel? Yes. Yes. If I roll lend aid, would that then give bonuses to claim by force? It would, it would. Claim by force. Uh, either that or unless power. Uh, um, in a marvel. No, 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 no. So lend aid could only benefit um, family moves. Okay. Okay, so it it can't mechanically help. No, no, it can if um, the your faction of the singulars use this shut down and explosions as an attempt to try and seize control of this area back from the false prophet. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Like this is a team effort kind of okay. thing. We have coordinated okay. a couple of uh, operatives to do this. All right. So uh, Ellie, do you want to roll plus your treaty with the uh, singulars? Okay, what am I adding to that? Uh, your treaty with them. A treaty with them. So I have three treaty with them, and they've got two treaty on me. So I'm so rolling it plus. Plus three. Plus three. Okay. Yeah. Ten. All right, great. Uh, so nice. you get plus one to your roll, to your uh, claim by force roll. Okay, so does grasp? Uh, let me see how much do I have. Of grasp, uh, woof, minus one, so I, I rolled plus zero. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Just fuck it. Uh, five. Five. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. Where is your god now? <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, so I think your um, your bomb goes off. There's fire, screaming. This big tower comes crashing down. Um, Percival and Brother Sergeant, what's his face? Uh, okay, I guess you, you sort of are sort of beating a retreat to try and get out of the chaos. Um, Adriel, you command your followers to attack to see to cast out the false prophet, and. Um, mm -hmm. It's at that point that the uh, network, access to the network, is shut off for this whole area. And it's like sort of, they flicker into focus things that had previously been completely sort of ignored by you. Mm. There are these sort of um, long, thin tendrils, um, like cables, covering the entire tower. And they're coming from the doorway into the tower um, and you can see actually everyone that's standing near that who is now sort of panicking in fear have one of these long thin tendrils implanted in the back of their neck and sort of coming out of the front of there's a sort of movement of the tendrils around the doorway and then this sort of figure is sort of well humanoid figure but sort of standing on a column of these cables with the cables sort of flowing out of them in all directions sort of pushes out and with the sort of wave of their hand um, a flow of cables sort of snakes out into your recruit into your soldiers as they try and sort of fight them and soon they fall to the ground and stop moving wonderful and I, uh, I, I, I think that's called evidence yes 
Uh, so <laughs> you have lost your uh, surplus in recruits. Uh, all of it? Uh, yep. <laughs> Shit. I was going to indoctrinate those. <laughs> I was yeah. going to sacrifice those in, for their cause. So. <laughs> well, it like, and yeah. your deal was recruits later, right? Mm. You can How... have some trouble with that deal now. Yeah. How dead are they? Are they dead? Well, they're not dead. Very badly? <laughs> There's a big difference between all dead and mostly dead. <laughs> well, the thing is, what what you will know is that my family, one of the moves I took was advanced medical technology. Hmm. Can Brother Sergeant Lycurgus and Acquirer Percival see the cables as well? Yes. Okay, I'm going to rip mine out of the back of my head. Then. Yep, yep. Oh, well, well, you don't have one in the... People outside the tower, you guys, don't have them anymore. Uh, oh, I see. probably I guess see. that they, they sort of snuck in there while you were inside the tower and then disconnected once you're out. But yes, um, so currently this uh, creature, this false prophet, is sort of, it looks like they're sort of, the ongoing control they'd had was dependent on the network, and now they're sort of taking a more direct approach, huh. sort of uh, pacifying the uh, singulars as they sort of run in terror from the fire and the explosions. And just sort of calming them down to sleep. Yeah, I, I want to. Well, are we under a, attack right now? Um, I'll say that probably they're. Well, were you part of the group that was going to attack this place and storm it and take it? Uh, no, or were you I was supposed to look. Shadows? Yeah, I was supposed to look innocent. Okay, in which case you three um, can probably get out of here if you want to. You're not directly under attack. Uh, I mean, where's the fucking door? Yeah, I know. Uh... I mean, you're out. You're all outside the tower at the moment. You're... I sort of imagined it on the sort of field surrounding it was where all this was happening. Uh, so, I grabbed the jersey guard by the, by the sleeve oh, and right. say, yeah, uh, you have to get out of here. I thought it was a better part of justice. <laughs> I have to. I have. I cannot leave my my followers here. This is important. I, I have important evidence that happily allows me to go in the direction of away. <laughs> yes, so. I, I will follow you shortly. If if I don't make it, tell what you've what you've seen. Tell of the horrors yeah. of the new false prophet. Jack, yeah. Okay, now you can run. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to hop on my riding lizard and ride away, and then once I'm a safe distance away, I'll call it into HQ. Okie dokie. And I presume you're out of there, Percival. Oh, he's, he's, he's long gone. <laughs> yeah, long gone. like... <laughs> Run away! Alright. Cloud of a smoke, like, uh, left, <laughs> like, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, what, what are you doing, Adriel? Um... So I'm going to uh, let me th see the things I have. Uh, right. So, yeah, did we uh, wrap up fairly soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, something. I'm uh, figuring after this, that'll be it. Yeah. So basically, I want to try to uh, break uh, as many of the cut uh, as many of those cables as I can to uh, free those those pe that, that people and get them out with me. Okay. Um, all right. I figure you're trying to sort of drive back the profit for the time being, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sounds like a fiercely assault then. Mm, is that a family move or? No, uh, the character move. Okay. Uh, fast. Yeah. Fiercely. So is that force? Or you can try and uh, hold together to resist the um, adversity and get out of there. Hmm. So it's a question of whether it's you, Adriel, sort of jumping to the rescue, or whether it's the family as a whole just sort of trying to resist the efforts. Uh, let me see, just a second. Uh, mm, 
Mm. Uh, mood? I don't know. Uh, what is my mood? Uh, uh, know. So it starts at minus one. Because you've lost that surplus, it's now minus two. Okay, let's go with I'm doing it. Okay. I'm doing it um, so this is firstly assault. And um, as a weapon, I'm using uh, here. Uh, I'm using the hand of God. I'm thinking that's pretty good. You know, you can sort of if you grab a cable, you can force some sort of noise and chaos into it. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to give some feedback to that fu fucking false false prophet. Sounds good. All right. Um, and that's uh, you. I and I wall using force. Yes. Which I have uh, plus one. That's all right. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a twelve. Oh, nice. <laughs> all right. So it actually works. Yeah, yeah. So uh, choose. So you drive them off. Uh, choose two from your list. I'll choose one from my list. Okay, um, basic, basic move. Um, um, the one about just having something available from the aftermath, uh, getting a device, that will not count as a people, right? No. Uh, I mean, you, you're driving them, off, driving them off, so either way you'll get the people oh, okay. back once they're, they've been healed, I guess. In that case, uh, I have to give get, make an impression here, so uh, I'm going to get useful information from my foes, Okay. and I want to inflict savage, terrifying harm, frightening and dismaying foes. Okie dokie. Which the Hand of God is equi equipped to do. Okay. Um, and... I'm going to say you take harm appropriate to the enemy. That's fine. Which will be three, I think. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. So you grab the uh, tendril, one of the tendrils, and send a huge burst of static, of, of sort of feedback through it. But obviously that feeds back through you as well, mm -hmm. uh, causing all sorts of brain problems. Um, but it. You know, the problems it causes to you are almost nothing compared to what it does to the prophet, who sort of, sort of screams in pain and recoils and just immediately sort of pulls their way all the way back up into the tower. Like all the tendrils out here are sort of plucked from the necks and just sort of, they sort of spin in a whirling sort of mass of cables uh, towards the door, where they form a sort of swirling boundary that forms into just a sort of complete solid wall of cables blocking off entry to the tower. But as you're um, pulling, uh, as you're momentarily hooked up into this creature, um, mm. yeah, you have a sort of vision, a vision of a battle, a great battle that obviously maybe this reminds it of, of um, a war happening in another realm, a war in heaven that this thing has been sent here to recruit for. Mm. It's a war that whatever side this thing is on is losing. So we only we don't only we not only have a god in the in the matrix we are, we also have a devil. Yes. So uh you you get a point of data as your family from learning this information. Cool. And you have a whole bunch of comatose people to take back to the transistors. Hooray! Absolutely <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, ooh, what? I uh, can fix them. It's fine. What harm boxes are you marking? Uh, so where do I see that? I don't have the PDF right now. So. Ooh, uh, harm boxes are on your document. Uh, just at the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. So I think uh, I have to mark three, right? Yes. Uh, because I don't know if I have any kind of protection. Probably doesn't even apply. Uh, uh, no, I ha no, I only have camo. Yeah. Uh, winded, fear, fear, um, 
Fearful and... Mm. Uh, probably... Febris. Okay. Yeah. So the winded and fearful will sort of clear out after a few hours, but you'll be left with feverish until you get some proper medical treatment. That's fine. Basically, it did affect my mind, so yeah. I'm going kind of like uh, on a trip here. All right. Okay. So um, there's been a showdown in the center of the homeland. A place previously thought of as safe has been shown to be covered by machines and on their way back there, unknown of this, of all the things that have gone down, are two people with a wanted criminal on their lizard. <laughs> but we'll get back to them next time, I'm sure. So, thank you all. Cool. Good <laughs> cool. Um, do people have any uh, feedback, positive, negative, things they think thought were unclear, things they'd like to change? Mm. I, I think I could do with printing out some stuff because I find flicking between the windows quite tricky. But that's next time. Um, I sometimes find distinguishing between family and personal stats a little fiddly, and uh, and also like um, I don't quite uh, get like the the fact that the data and intel are like separate, but mm. are kind of in similar ways. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, Maybe, um, hmm. having having some way in which players can be involved in some way, even when like only one person is around, like could potentially be something. But oh, yeah, um, it's I do have that. I sorry, I just um, didn't sort of occur to me to use it because like it's like making a quick character, as they are called in the. Uh... Ah, right, yeah. mm. is, is actually, I mean, it's very quick when you've got a sheet of paper in front of you that you can just pull and take yeah. a few boxes, but I was, it wasn't right. set up with the documents here. But yeah, no, that makes sense. Rest assured that there yeah. is a sort of thing for it, and I'll try and set it up for next session to be an easier thing to do. Mm. Cool. I was, I was wondering what, like, mechanically, what would happen if, say, like, Brother Sergeant Lycurgus had attempted to do something instead of being useless and terrible at his job. <laughs> Mechanically, what would have happened? Uh, so they have the same not, stats as not... other characters. Uh, they just have um, less moves and all that sort of thing. Um, so they're basically characters in every way. They just sort of don't have the sort of stats and powers of big sort of main characters. Mm. Uh, but yes, I should definitely have used those. Um, for... Sorry, I didn't. Didn't have those. I'll send you all the documents so you can have a look through it. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So, more sort of, like we we managed. I somehow managed to avoid getting into any fights whilst retrieving my fugitive. Where is it? I'm trying to find furiously assault, fiercely assault. There we go. So, this is when you use an appropriate weapon to hurt, capture, or drive off your enemies. Hmm. Is there any kind of what I'm trying to figure out is how many people can I fight at once and get and like have it work? Because the move's quite open ended, or is it just GM discretion in that regard? Well, hmm. it's, yeah, it's what makes sense in the fiction. So, um, I mean, obviously, if you've got yourself in a uh, fortified position where you could easily hold off a group, or there's a choke point, or that sort of thing. Uh, it would work. Uh, likewise, if your weapon has the area tag on it, it's great at taking out groups. Mm. So I was just wondering what would have happened if uh, if Acquirer Morgan had decided to cook those fools who were trying to jack them away? Um, would they have been able to meaningfully engage them? Because they had a gun and the other people didn't, so even though there were three yep. of them, and that's the thing, is that if it feels like you're in a good position to do it, then you can do it. Hmm. I mean, I'm just... The tags are just a I way of sort of establishing that. I, uh... I, uh, preferred not to rely on my minus one force. Well, that's <laughs> also an issue. And I mean... also I felt it was 
or in character for them to not use their gun unless they absolutely had to. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe I should sort of... Hmm. I'm just thinking... I mean, it might just be something to put guidance in the GM section. I've yeah. not read that bit. I mean, so the, just... the book itself has sort of, like, for the discussion of each of these moves and examples of them in play, but... Okay. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Because the, the Powered by the Apocalypse games I've played or run hmm. previously have been, like, a, just a little bit more concrete about how the fighter dude move yeah. works. I might mm. sort of tighten up the trigger for that a bit. Mm. I mean, yeah, there's in in some games there's things like uh, depending on the size size of the group you are fighting with and the size of your group, that kind of stuff. Mm. You have advantage of disadvantage, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's like levels. Of... Yeah, like um, Apocalypse World has you do more damage and take less damage if you outnumber the enemy and that sort of thing. I. Yeah, yeah. Well, Apocalypse World doesn't really have a combat move, does it? Oh, it has dozens in the second edition. Uh, oh, I've not read the second edition. I just remember the one I read. It, it has take by force and go aggro. Yeah. And if yeah. you just want to fight someone, then you need to come somehow like mangle it into one of those moves. Yeah, I think the idea is that uh, it's never about the fight. It's yeah. about what you get what out you're of trying it. Trying to accomplish with the violence. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Cool. Right. I'm gonna go and eat something. No worries, no worries. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, James. Thank you all. That was a fun session. And yeah, it was great. Yeah, thank you very much. All right.